Hi Sagittarius, welcome to your end of June 2023 general tarot update. It's Rena here, fellow Sun and Sag. How has June been uh, for some of you? Of course, I, I got the world card and we had a full moon in Sag at the beginning of June. So... Um, you know, that kind of thing can be very Oh, you know what? <laughs> uh I'm uh that that really I feel a sense of being touched by the seven of pentacles. You know, after getting the Ten of Wands. Oh, okay. The heart of the matter is the Two of Cups. This is a card of, whenever you see a two, there can be some sort of um, choice that a person has to make. And it can feel very... Um, difficult like for a sign like Sag to commit commitment uh, if you are with someone and maybe I was gonna now this popped into my mind so I'm honoring it I was gonna say if you're with a cancer individual which is kind of an interesting combination and they want to get married and you want to live with them you know just the the usual situation Taurus Capricorn those kind of signs are more traditional and they may not like the idea of cohabitation and for you it feels spacious you know um and it you know i'm sure there are those outlier sages that want to get married or you know and they're with somebody who doesn't so i know that it's not a monolith um i'm not married though and i've been with my partner for decades and um He's a Sag too, so that that makes it easier if you happen to be with a Sag. Another thing about the Two of Cups is the idea of forgiveness. And, you know, in order to forgive someone, somebody has to uh, really F you over, right? Um, it's not about somebody treating you nicely and you're nice to them. So that's where it can get a little tricky because... If this is something that has happened consistently, it may feel like, no, I do not forgive that person. That person knows exactly what they're doing. And even if somebody knows exactly what they're doing, that's even more messed up that they continue to do negative things. And it's not about like, oh, poor them. They're so, they're so messed up and we have to tolerate their nonsense. It's about, to me, ultimately, it's about not allowing other people's negative energy to impact us negatively. In the past position, we have the world card. So again, that full moon, that could be really um, illustrating that and how it had a punctuation mark, like a period, like, okay, that's done. And this might be, a relationship or a um maybe it's like a phase in your life you were graduating from college or you just retired there are so many phases in our life it's like an end of an era and um with with um you know sometimes it can feel like really scary because it's like okay well I don't know how my life is going to change, like what's going to be different. And there was a, a solar eclipse in your fifth house in Aries that might have brought in a new love interest into your life, whether you're actually actively involved with them. Maybe you held off because you were involved with somebody else. No, we don't have any guarantees. Um, and that it's kind of like a juicy novel. If you look at it that way, you don't have to worry about what the plot, you know, the plot twists are going to be because it's like exciting. You can just 
kind of be like, I can't wait to see what happens next. Now, of course, we are writing our novel. If we're doing it right, if we're, if we're not sleepwalking through life, we're part of the process. So it's all um, exciting. It's interconnected. The higher message is the Two of Swords. What are you um, feeling like torn about that you're really like lying to yourself about? Look at that blindfold made by her eyes, her hair. And, you know, what is it going on? Now, those black birds, to me, with this deck, re represent negative thoughts that um, negatively impact how a person perceives themselves and what they're capable of. And that can really um, limit... Okay, and the card that... Um, crosses you as the Ten of Wands. By the way, I had to start a new file because my phone was filled with files. And so I'm sorry if I left the Two of Swords undone, but I just... Anyway. <laughs> um, so this is a card, you can see the Beast of Burden. Um, this is a card that can be where you feel that you have... Um, a weight on your shoulders. So even let's say you got a um, promotion, you may be like, oh, I didn't realize it was going to require so much work. So something good can be happening to you professionally with your career. And you can feel this sense of being weighted down in relationships. This can be the belief and the action that somehow you're responsible for other people's problems and you have to carry their load. Um, and so for instance, if this is a relationship issue and you're contemplating, um, connecting with someone else or committing to someone else, but you feel like you're, um, what's that term I always use? Like doing the heavy lifting in the relationship then I feel like um, you really need to look at that. I, I do believe that women tend to be more relationship oriented than men per se. So um, I don't think it's that unusual for a woman to kind of plan um, things for the, the couple to do and whatnot. I don't think that's what, what I'm talking about here. If the other person is a willing participant, then that then that is then that's not a big deal. But I'm just talking about in general. If you feel like it's a one sided relationship where you're putting in way more effort, and that other person is just kind of um, taking in some way, and they're not really. It's not about like oh, if you're buying them dinner more than they're doing to you or whatever. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about energy wise in terms of like be, you know, affection. And so, um, with the two of cups, maybe you are the one who wants to, to, to get, um, married. Maybe you are, uh, if you're, if you're a, a son in, um, in a Sag and you want to get married, I, I was going to say, I guarantee that you have Venus and Capricorn, but you might have Venus and Scorpio. Um, but I just think that in general, in those cases, the reason that you're frustrated is because that person doesn't want to commit and you do. And you're, and it's, you're carrying that relationship on your back and maybe you can't see that but you have to see it before doing something that important. What's coming in as a Knight of Wands, this is actually connected to Sag, hence that horse in the background. And this is a kind of a wild energy. And I see it as a adventurous, but when I say the word adventurous, what I'm really alluding to is when someone has been, maybe they've been really stressed out and they've been um, overly cautious or they just have been feeling the strain in life and they haven't been playful. They haven't really been having fun. 
And it can be because like with the two of swords, the person is, um, trying to deal with a certain matter, but they're not, they're in denial, perhaps. Maybe that's why they're blinded by it. And, you know, in order to be, um, to give like a, a, to make a good decision, you have to be coming at it from a balanced perspective. That only uh, stands to reason. So keep that in mind. And I, I also think that you're not going to be as hung up on things. Maybe you'll be like with the two of cups. If you came out of some kind of long-term relationship that felt very, um, what's the word, like confining, and you met somebody that you feel is very um, free, that can lead to that person may not be willing to um, settle down, at least not now. So that's kind of like one of those things that you have to deal with um, when you're in that position. And yeah, it's, it's just, um, it's just kind of funny how that works, but the Knight of Wands kinds of like brings you back to that Sagittarian energy. So even if your moon is in cancer, I was talking about, you know, being with somebody who's a cancer, but if your moon is in cancer, you may be kind of emotionally very cautious and you have to throw caution to the wind perhaps in order to really embody that Sag that you came here to express. The outcome is the seven of pentacles. And this is about nurturing some kind of thing that is growing. Now, yes, if you have met someone and you have fallen in love with a new person, nurture that. Don't be so, um, you know, impatient, let it grow. It has to grow. It's in its early stages, but this could be a business as well. Uh, perhaps you've been kind of like, um, there's a term in law of attraction, Esther Hicks, going upstream and trying too hard to make something happen. And you have to be more adventurous and playful and just confident that it is going to manifest for you. Um, it's like, ex uh, kind of like assessing your growth. And I, I just get that, that, uh, Taurus kind of vibe from the seven of pentacles. Okay, that's what I have for you, Sag. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I have package deals of astrology and one with astrology in the tarot for a special price uh, that we can explore your chart and explore transits for the next 12 months. I've also got standalone readings with love or with career or life path kinds of issues. Um, you can find out more information at the link below. I'm at rainamoonastrology.com. Thank you for watching. Sag's rock.